The St. Belex slab, discovered in France in 1900, is thought to be Europe's oldest map. Dating to the Bronze Age, this block of grey-blue schist stone covered in carved markings appears to be a map of a part of Brittany as it looked 4,000 years ago. Now, researchers think it might be a useful guide for finding archaeological sites in that area because it's entirely possible that some of the markings are meant to indicate Bronze Age burial mounds or settlements. In this video, I discuss the history of this strange artefact, details from the original research paper on it, and why it's currently in the news. In 1900, the prehistorian Paul du Châtelet went to excavate a 30 meter diameter round barrow overlooking the Odette River Valley at Saint Belec in Finisterre. The centre of the barrow was found to contain a cyst burial. Cysts are small stone-lined tombs that were most common in Bronze Age Europe, but there were also examples belonging to the late Neolithic. This particular cyst measured 3.86 by 2.1 meters and was 1.86 meters in height. It had an east-west alignment and was covered by a huge capstone. A large quartz block made up its eastern wall and its northern and southern walls were made up of quartzite stones. The slab with the markings formed its western wall and was made of grey-blue schist stone. It had clearly been broken at some point in its history with the top part missing. According to Chatelier, it weighed between 1.5 and 2 tonnes and needed 15 people to move it from the grave. The slab measures 2.2 by 1.53 metres and is 16 centimetres thick. Remains of wooden structures were also found within the grave and it contained a broken ceramic pot which Chatelier described but that unfortunately went missing. Both the style of pot and the type of grave are typical of the Bronze Age. Furthermore, the markings on the slab are not similar to megalithic art found in the region, so it's unlikely to have been reused from a Neolithic structure. Researchers have therefore concluded that the grave was dug and the slab was carved during the Bronze Age. Du Chatelier removed the slab and took it to his house, the Chateau de Canus, where it spent some time in a niche in the house's moat before being stored in its cellar. It was eventually acquired by the National Archaeological Museum in 1924, but remained at the chateau until its rediscovery in 2014. The missing part of the slab was found at some point split into four fragments. However, there's no record of where these fragments were found, and unfortunately three of them were then lost again. Between 2017 and 2021, the slab was analysed as part of a collaboration between the French National Institute for Preventive Archaeological Research, Bournemouth University, the French National Centre for Scientific Research, and the University of Western Brittany, with the results of this study being published in the Bulletin of the French Prehistoric Society and in the Oxford Journal of Archaeology. An analysis of the rock showed that it's probably volcanic in origin and was excavated locally, so it wasn't trans transported far. The study used 3D surveys such as photogrammetry to record the markings on the slab which are remarkably well preserved. Aside from the markings they also mapped the undulations of the surface. Due to its excellent condition it seems that the slab wasn't exposed to the elements very much at all. The markings consist of geometric shapes including straight and curved lines, round and oval cup marks and squares which were carved by being pecked or incised. The team were able to identify nine stages in the creation of the carved surface. A Harris matrix was used to summarize the relationships between each engraving, as can be seen here. Early references to the St. Belex slab talk about the possibility of it being a map. So the research team investigated it to test this hypothesis. Since the barrow where the slab was discovered overlooks the Odette River Valley, the researchers compared the geology of this area with the shape of the surface and the markings on the slab, they discovered a strong statistical correlation between a triangle etched into the left part of the slab and the shape of the valley, as well as between the lines all over the slab and local rivers. Some of the cup marks appear to correlate with known early Bronze Age barrows in the same area. The research team concluded that the slab's markings depict Bronze Age settlements, barrows, fields, and a river's tributaries, and were able to map the geological elements onto an area measuring 
30 by 21 kilometers of the Odette Valley in Finisterre. They also found that the surface of the slab appeared to have been modified to represent the topography of the local area. Since a 3.7 hectare Bronze Age settlement that had been excavated at Lannion in Brittany was curvilinear in shape, the research team suggested that this may be represented by the central markings on the slab. The settlement had a circular enclosure made up of an earthwork and a ditch with an opening towards the southwest where a barrow cemetery for elites had also been excavated. Cut marks surrounding the central feature on the slab might represent these barrows. The team also suggested that cross-linked markings could be field systems. Overall, the researchers found an 80% match between the topography shown on the slab and that of modern-day maps of the same area. However, not all geometric markings were decoded. Since previous excavations of Bronze Age sites in this part of Brittany had shown that a social hierarchy existed in the region 4,000 years ago, the researchers suggested that the slab was actually a map of an ancient political entity centred on a royal enclosure. The political entity probably used the map as a show of power rather than for navigation, and when it lost control over the territory, the slab, no longer meaning anything, was reused in the tomb. The St. Belek slab recently hit the ancient history headlines again, because researchers are currently using it to search for archaeological sites that have not been investigated before. Ivan Pele and Nicolas Clement, who were both involved in the paper I've just discussed above, are cross-referencing the area thought to be covered by the slab with its markings. They say this could take 15 years years. However, before beginning this part of the project, they revisited the burial mound where the slab had originally been found and discovered several fragments of the slab that had not been noticed before. As they discussed in their paper, some of the cut marks on the slab correspond to known Bronze Age round barrows, so it's possible that other cut marks represent ones that have not been found, or they might indicate Bronze Age settlements or even geological deposits. It will be interesting to see what they find. In the original 2021 paper. The authors also talk about other ancient carvings that are thought to represent maps. I've discussed the one in Katulhoyuk in Turkey before because what's thought to represent the plan of a village, diagram A here, may also show the Hassan Dagi volcano erupting, so I included it in a video I did about ancient depictions of volcanic eruptions. Diagram B shows what's known as the Bedalina map, a 4.3 by 2.5 meter rock carving overlooking the middle valley of the Valamonica in Lombardy. This particular map is thought to be Iron Age. Diagram C and Diagram D are rock carvings from Ireland and Portugal respectively. Researchers have not been able to date them with any certainty, so they could have been created any time between the 5th and 1st millennia BCE, but they are also thought to be maps. Then there are examples from South Africa shown in diagrams E and F, which also appear to exploit the relief of the rocks to map the topography of the area. This whole thing has got me thinking, how many ancient maps could have been missed in the past. Is the St. Belek slab really the oldest map in Europe or do they go back further than the Bronze Age? There's a lot of Neolithic rock art that consists of geometric carvings, so I wonder if these petroglyphs might be part of rudimentary maps. Look at these cup and ring marks from Ballygowan in Kelmartin Glen, Scotland. To me they resemble henge structures with openings or maybe even cairns with their passageways into the central chamber, a sort of aerial view without the tumulus that covers the tomb. There are certainly plenty of cairns and at least one henge structure in Kilmartin Glen. It's a bit of a stretch, but you never know. Anyway, I will follow the St. Belek slab work to see what the researchers find. There could be some pretty extensive Bronze Age settlements just waiting to be discovered. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please hit the like button if you haven't already. Thank you to my patrons and channel members for all your support and I'll see you next time.